Welcome all my fellow Washington brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Washington football team fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. I want to give you a breakdown of the single UDFA that Washington signed post-draft and running back Jared Patterson out of Buffalo. Very prestigious collegiate career. A guy that grew up in the DMV dreaming of being a Washington football team member. That dream has come true. I think this guy's got sticking power. I'm excited about this signing as many of you are. And we're going to get to that breakdown here in a second. However, I do want to bring something to your attention. Uh, what you're going to notice is that Ron Rivera is going to be in the limelight here over the next week or two. It's what we see from NFL coaches this time of the year, post-draft. Everybody wants a piece of the head coach, wants to know uh, how their draft fared, how did things go. If you didn't attack a position, hey, why didn't you attack this position? Uh, how excited are you about the draft picks that you were able to get? And you're going to see them, uh, in, in, including Ron, doing the media circuit, you know, national media outlets. So you're going to see Ron on NFL Network. You're going to see Ron on ESPN. You're going to hear him on the radio. You're going to hear him doing podcasts because that's what happens this time of the year. So I was able to run across uh, a clip of Ron doing a spot on Channel 7 with the anchor Scott Abram, uh, the sports anchor for uh, Channel 7, Scott Abrams. And Scott asked him about the quarterback position in particular and that was one of the sources of contention for most fans that didn't necessarily love the draft or didn't love aspects of the draft is, hey, they didn't do anything to solve the biggest need we had going into the draft, which was the quarterback position. I contend that that was a position that if they loved a the guy, they would go up. But I told you guys from the jump that, ploy, that player had to come into their wheelhouse. If the guy was too far, I said, Ron had already told us. I said, Ron has never lied to us to this point. Ron said, look, I'm not trying to mortgage the future to go up and get anybody. If somebody were to come into the wheelhouse, however, we feel like this is a good spot, then we'll strike. And I think Justin Fields was the guy that was approaching that strike zone. And you'll, if you listen closely, you'll hear that there was another quarterback that they were really interested in. We heard that throughout the process, but I think Ron kind of confirmed it without actually confirming it. And I'll, I'll give you my insight as to what he was talking about. But the next voice you're going to hear is that of Scott Abram. And then obviously the next voice you'll hear is that of head coach Ron Rivera. Take a listen. Ron, there was one position I did not hear, and that was quarterback. Yes. How close were you to either trading up in that first round or, or maybe assessing that position later in the draft? Well, uh, we both both those situations we had conversations with, Scott. Um, we, we, we liked a couple of those young quarterbacks uh, an awful lot that, that there was consideration. The thing that always seemed to just kind of make us step back and think about it, though, was the draft capital we'd have to give up. Um, we are also in position to add players that could help us and, and help us fill the holes uh, on our roster. And so as we kept debating, we, and we, and it was always, well, let, let's take one more look. Let's see if it falls again. At the right number, it would have been something we could have done. Um, then the guys we talked about waiting on ended up getting taken early. And so when those two guys left, then we just felt, okay, hey, we're going to stick with what we got. Uh, we, got a, we got a group of young guys uh, led by Ryan Fitzpatrick that we think can, can develop and be guys that can be very good football players for us. And, and we're going to see. We're going to find out. So you heard Ron pretty much tell you that there were two quarterbacks that they were interested in. One was Justin Fields, who did fall in his draft. And he said, hey, let's take another look and see if he falls again. If there was another and he wasn't going to get past Minnesota. So they would have had to have gotten in front of Minnesota, as we later found out. And Minnesota did take Kellen Mond. So, you know, they were interested in drafting a quarterback. They would have taken Justin Fields at 14. And honestly, I don't know what the hell Minnesota was waiting on. If they wanted Justin Fields, he was literally three picks in front of them. They should have gone and got him instead of waiting and thinking he was just going to fall into their lap. Uh, nonetheless, that's not our problem. That's theirs. We didn't want to come up that far and give up what it was going to take. You saw what the Bears ultimately had to give up to get Justin Fields. We were only a pick in front of them. So uh, still, I still think he was a little bit outside of Washington's strike zone. And I told you, if we were going to trade up for a quarterback... He was going to have to be in the strike zone. And, and I kept telling you guys, 
I'm talking maybe three or four picks away from Washington, and that's when they would come up and try and get that guy. But they weren't going to go into the top 10, and really, uh, Fields was just outside the top 10. But here's another interesting caveat that you should take from that. He said the other guy, meaning there was only one more, one more guy, the other guy that we were waiting on to see if he would fall got taken pretty early. He's talking about Trey Lance. So those were the two guys that they were interested in. Okay, those were the two guys that they were interested in. And he said, once those two guys were gone, meaning Lance and Fields, we just said to hell with it. Let's move on and let's go about our business the way we had anticipated when this thing got underway. So uh, he pretty much told you, yeah, we were interested in two quarterbacks in particular, but uh, they needed to kind of fall into our strike zone. Neither of them ever did. And so they proceeded with their board and 10 picks later, the draft was finalized so without any further ado i just wanted to bring that to your attention you can leave a comment in the comment section about how you feel about that because there are a lot of you who really were not happy with washington not coming away with the quarterback so now you have your explanation essentially as to why they did what they did it may not be enough to satisfy your frustration and anger but that's to me a rational reason as to why they didn't do what they did. And I, and I already had told you that that was why they were going to do what they were going to do because Ron had already told us that was going to be their reasoning behind them not moving up for a quarterback more likely than not. But in any event, enough of that. Let's get into Jarrett Patterson and what he brings to the table. I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of Jarrett Patterson running back out of Buffalo that Washington gets as a UDFA. So let's take a look. So, Jarrett Patterson is a guy that, when you look at his numbers at Buffalo, it's astonishing that he didn't get drafted. Even if you don't love his size, even if you don't love, you know, you know some of the, the, the attributes in his skill set, the guy put up some ridiculous numbers, and there's talent here. So, it was shocking to me that he didn't get drafted. I thought... Worst case scenario, someone's going to take a seventh round flyer on this guy. And for him not to get drafted, really interesting. And nonetheless, 5'6", 195 pound, running back out of Buffalo. He's a junior. And uh, this is a guy that in 33 games over the last three seasons uh, had 3,884 yards on, three, on 636 carries, which is ridiculous. Averages out to 6.3 yards a carry. Let me say that again. <laughs> On 636 totes, Jarrett Patterson had 3,884 yards, which averages out to 6.3 yards a pop. 52 total touchdowns. You know, the thing that was so striking to me was in just six games this year for the, uh, for the Buffalo um, Bulls, he had 141 carries, 1,072 yards, and 19 touchdowns in just six games. <laughs> I mean, that is utterly ridiculous is what that is. Um, th this is a guy that, to me, over the last two years, was one of the better backs in all of college football. Put up some big numbers. Obviously, he's playing in the MAC. He's not playing in a Power 5 conference. So, you know, he's not going to get as much love as some of the, the other running backs. And uh, he didn't get any love, essentially, because he wasn't drafted. But that doesn't mean this guy can't play ball at a high level so uh, a couple of more numbers i want to throw at you he ran a 4 5 2 40 at his pro day so no he's not a blazer but he's got enough speed to make some things happen and you saw that on tape essentially now again he's in the mac you know he's running away from you know bowling green defenders not ohio state defenders not clemson defenders not you know south carolina or georgia or florida defenders but nonetheless he's still making big plays 15 career games of 100 yards or more for Jared Patterson over his three-year, 33-game stretch. So think about that for a second. Nearly half of his games, he rushed for over 100 yards. Seven career games of 170 yards or more rushing. So in just a, sh a shade over a fifth of his games, so you're talking about 22, 23% of his games, this guy's rushing for over 170 yards in three of those games he rushed for 200 or more yards so again <laughs> this guy uh, put up some ridiculous numbers and then in two of those games 
He rushed for 300 yards or more, including a 400-yard-plus performance against, uh, I want to say it was Kent State, where he rushed for eight touchdowns in that game. It was all over SportsCenter. That's when Jarrett Patterson first jumped on my radar when he had that ridiculous game against Kent State, lit him up, eight touchdowns, 400-plus yards in that game, 500 and some odd total yards of offense, I believe, in that football game for him against Kent State. Uh, He was phenomenal. Nonetheless, and he had another game, just to add to this, two 300-yard career games and then another one that was 298 yards. So damn near three games of 300 yards or more rushing. Um, just a phenomenal career for Jarrett Patterson. Uh, so I'm going to give you a, a my I'm going to give you my report that I re- wrote for him, and then we'll get out of here. So this will this report will pretty much give you all you need to know. I'll clean up any loose ends at the end of this thing, and um, we'll get out of here. So University of Buffalo running back Jarrett Patterson has been doubted every step of his career, beginning in high school where he was a two-star recruit that received no offers to play Division I football despite rushing for over 2,000 yards in his senior season to go along with 23 touchdowns. The only reason Jarrett Patterson was even offered to play at Buffalo is because his twin brother James, who was more highly sought after, said that he and his brother were a package. So I'll stop there for a second. Uh, Jarrett Patterson went to high school with Chase Young. Uh, Chase Young was a a junior or a sophomore, excuse me, um, in high school when Patterson was a freshman. And then Chase Young transferred. um, And uh, there's a picture that I saw on social media with all of those guys, James, uh, uh, Jarrett, and Chase, all about maybe – 14, 15 years old in that picture. Uh, It's funny. Uh, Anyway, Jarrett and his brother James are twins. James was the one that was more highly sought after. uh, These two were really good football players, but James was the guy that teams were interested in. Nobody wanted Jarrett because of his size. He was too small. And they they took a trip, and I, I found this story to be fascinating. And this is the kind of stuff that that guys hold on to for the rest of their lives and used it as motivation, used it as a chip. So uh, they went on a, on a recruiting trip to eastern Michigan. And uh, his brother James got offered a scholarship by eastern Michigan. So they took the trip. And Jarrett wanted to see if he could go with his brother to eastern Michigan as well on a, on a scholarship. And they told him right to his face, no, uh, we're not offering you anything at this time. Uh, and, and so He left the group that was taking the tour around the campus, ran into the bathroom and started to cry. And his college coach that was or high school coach, excuse me, that was there with them on the trip, found him in the bathroom and told him, hey, stop crying. Don't let anybody see you crying. But he was so devastated that he had been turned down by yet another school that his brother had been um, recruited by and had been given and, uh, you know, extended an offer to, to sign there. So he just wanted an opportunity, essentially. But I digress. We move on. After getting past the enormous chip that Jarrett Patterson carries on his shoulder, it's no surprise that his collegiate uh, career was just as decorated as his high school career and still wasn't drafted. Still, his collegiate production is as good as you'll find. Patterson offers a low center of gravity and a ridiculously strong and stout lower half that produces elite contact balance in addition patterson offers short area quickness to be able to make tacklers miss in space or in tight quarters so we'll put a pin in that right there and we'll come back to it patterson to me has one of the traits that i look for in any running back you could be a 4-4 guy you could be a 4-3 guy you could be a 4-2 guy if you don't have contact balance you're not usually going to have opportunities to showcase that speed because in this league at some point, you're going to endure contact on a play. Now, if it's perfectly blocked up and you hit it much faster than slow and there's nobody there but a safety and you've got 4-2 speed, you might be able to outrun his angle and he never touches you and no one lays a finger on you and you're gone. But a lot of times in this league, someone's going to put lay hands on you, whether it's upper body, lower body. You're going to have to fight through contact and keep your balance, stay on your feet. And I told you the best running back I've seen in the last – seven years come out of the draft in terms of contact balances, Alvin Kamara. And I think that's part of the reason he's such a dynamic back 
is his contact balance is second to none. Jarrett Patterson has tremendous contact balance, and that really aids you at the NFL level because, again, you're going to be contacted. Guys are going to bump you. Guys are going to try to arm tackle you. Guys are going to try to trip you up. You've got to be able to stay on your feet, and Jarrett Patterson has that ability to do that. He's also a guy that doesn't have long speed but does have really short, good short area quickness. You see it out in space with him uh, making guys miss, and I, I was more impressed with his ability to make defenders miss in the hole, which to me is an even better indication of short area quickness because out in space, there's that's why they call it out in space. You've got space around you to operate and maneuver with, in tight quarters, in the hole, there's not a ton of space to make a guy miss in what they call a phone booth. Uh, that's a pretty special uh, trait to have, and Patterson has that ability. Patterson is a patient runner that explodes through holes, and you know the saying, um, slow to explode through um, holes once he sees daylight. His ability to hide behind O-linemen and slither through the tiniest holes makes him even more dangerous. Although not featured in this regard uh, often, Patterson shows soft hands and the ability to pass protect as well. A high and tight ball carrier, Patterson rarely fumbles. Only two over the last two seasons despite 466 touches. Patterson does not, however, possess home run speed. Talked about the 4 uh, 5 two, 40 can be too patient to the hole at times. Sometimes he's a little bit too deliberate on choosing a hole. The hole is there. He needs to stick his foot and go much faster than slow. A lot of times he can be really, really patient, overly patient, which will allow backside defenders to track him down if he doesn't hurry up and hit that hole or it'll close up before he's able to exploit it. And has short legs that make for very small and choppy steps. His movements can be segmented and too deliberate, almost coming to a complete stop in order to make cuts. And Patterson is a monotone runner, meaning he doesn't have different gears. He doesn't accelerate and then reaccelerate or deaccelerate and then reaccelerate. Um, that's just not him. It's usually one speed. Even when he gets out into the open field, there isn't another gear that he turns it up. You know how you've seen Adrian Peterson be running, you know, run somebody over, and then within two steps, you see that, that head kind of going in that track uh, stance and form, and he's hauling ass and turning it from second gear all the way to fifth gear. There, there's no such thing for Jarrett Patterson. There's just, new, there's just the third gear. That's all he's got. Doesn't have a fourth gear, doesn't have a fifth gear. He's just got a third gear, and that's it. That doesn't have another gear once out in space. All in all, Jarrett Patterson projects as a change of pace back that – if necessary, can shoulder a bit more of the load for a limited amount of time. The level of disrespect Patterson has seen throughout his career will serve as motivation to continue to prove the doubters wrong. And I think that's the thing that's going to continue to push this guy to new heights is the fact that he's been disrespected at every turn, high school, now college, and he's not been given a chance in the NFL to this point and so he is going to do everything in his power to make this football team, which I don't see anything stopping him from making this football team. If you're trying to convince me that 30-year-old Lamar Miller is going to stop Jarrett Patterson from making this team, uh, you got you to gotta really, really sell me on that because I, I have a hard time buying that Lamar Miller is going to stop Jarrett Patterson from making this football team. I think he completes that running back room. And my player comp for him is Jaquiz Rogers. You know, the former um, Oregon State running back that made it to the league, had some successful stints with Tampa Bay and Atlanta, and um, small guy, 5'6 or so, ran hard, physical runner. I think that Jarrett Patterson is a little bit more dynamic than Jaquiz Rogers, but similar build. Um, and, and I think this guy has a chance, man. I'm excited about this opportunity for him. I like the player that we're getting here. And to me, he's like another draft pick. We had a draft with 10 players. It, this feels like 11 right here because I fully expect him to make this football team. And I think they're going to give him every opportunity to do exactly that. And I think he's going to take full advantage of it. And I can't wait to see this guy in a burgundy and gold uni because I think he's going to do big things for 
this football team and add to the depth that we have at the running back position and make that position that much stronger. So I look for Jared Patterson to crack the 53-man roster and have a legitimate shot. And even if he doesn't, he'll be on the practice squad more likely than not. And um, he'll be a guy that if, if an injury happens like it did last year, we'll be able to pull him up and feel good about another guy uh, being on the roster already instead of having to wonder what are they going to do? Are they going to sign somebody off the street? We already got somebody here in Jarrett Patterson. I, I, I'm really excited about this. And what says you? What do you think about this signing? And what do you think about the prospects of Jarrett Patterson making this football team? Uh, we've already got two backs, three, um, really, if you count uh, Barber. And so I don't see Barber going anywhere. We know J.D. McKissick and Antonio Gibson are going to be locks on this football team. I think Peyton Barber uh, is a lock as well, more likely than not. So they're probably going to have to carry four backs. Do you see them doing that or do you see this guy ending up on the outside looking in on the practice squad, but being the first guy obviously off the bench if something were to go awry at the running back position? Leave it down in the comment section along with a like and a sub if you haven't already done so. I'm your man Louis T signing off. Remember, I am a Washington fan etched in burgundy and gold. My Washington spirit will never die. Washington spirit will never fold until we meet again. Hail to the beloved Washington football team. I look forward to chopping up with you guys this week on Thursday night for the Washington Football Report Live. Until then, get off the bench, get in the game, and get you a Ron's Plan. Ron's Plan t-shirt. Remember, pre-orders are going on as we speak. Free shipping on all of these orders. Limited quantity available, so get it while supplies last. Here's a little bit of a reminder in case you forgot. Ron's Plan. Ron's Plan. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.